Alligator gar have undergone few evolutionary changes throughout history. Researchers are studying the gar at the LSU Ag Center Aquaculture Research Station for genetics and reproductive purposes. They've been able to persist for so long, and we want to try to figure out what are some of those uh, things, parts of their, their um, genetics, their physiology, their life histories that have allowed them to survive so well. Chris Green, a scientist at the station, has studied the gar for the past seven years. Part of his work involves looking for ways to build on existing research related to fish production and increase the spawning success of the gar. We all kind of share those resources to learn what works the best and develop a way to move forward in terms of making the fish spawn, making the babies, and making those babies grow up to then be stocked out into, uh, you know, into our waters. Surprisingly, gar could be considered more closely related to humans than fish. This opens up an avenue of research on gar that may benefit people. They're basically more genetically similar to humans than they are to other fishes. And so we can use information from those teleost fishes and use the gar to kind of translate it to be more applicable for human medicine. Capturing the gar proved to be a challenge, with some weighing more than 50 pounds. As part of the research, they were identified by a chip reader, weighed, and then injected with a hormone that would stimulate reproduction processes. Another unique feature is gar breathe air when water temperatures become hot. For some reason, their gills are not as effective, so they have to switch over uh, to aerial respiration. So they, they come up and they like this, and they actually physically have to open their mouths to suck in air, just like we have to breathe. The fish were placed in holding tanks where they will spawn in 24 to 48 hours. With the LSU Ag Center, this is Craig Gotro reporting for RFD-TV.